Hey guys, how's it going? On today's video, I wanted to do a quick uh, overview of a early model and a late model heater core. If you want to see, I'm going to go ahead and restore it, but if you want to see a full video, uh, restore it, which I'll link right here. He did a full teardown on one of these and restored it, but I want to just want to go over some of the modifications that I'm going to be doing to it and the difference between the early model, which came out of my uh, 87 IS, and this one is from a 89 uh, 325 IX, although all the late models will be the same and then all the early models uh, will be the same. This is a both US with the four or five speed, I forget what the, what the dial is for, but I noticed in his video, he had caps that go under this one, which goes to your uh, lower under the seat vents, which I will be deleting. So if I can find the caps that he has in his videos, I'm gonna go ahead and order those. Uh, so that's like an OEM delete. Obviously these are just for the feet, but we'll leave that. And then we'll go ahead and start with the differences. As you can see here on the late model, the control box and everything is a lot different than the early model one, which we have right here. You can also see that the pigtail, uh, the main pigtail is different. This is 10 pins, whereas this is only nine. So I, when I'm filming this right now, not sure what the 10th the pin goes to yet, but I will figure that out and report back. Uh, but other than that, this wiring, which is for your cigarette lighter and a light, is the same. This uh, wire, which goes to underneath the glove box to where your ECU is and your engine harness, is different from this one, which also goes to the same spot over there. But pretty much everything else is pretty close to the same. Since I will be deleting all of the uh, air conditioning or heater that goes underneath the seat. That means we can also get rid of this lower one, which controls that, which you can see is that green lever right there. So obviously we're gonna make sure it's in the closed position and we'll probably figure out how to lock it like that. And then obviously we're gonna cap the lower so that all of the air doesn't get, get caught there, it can go straight out the front vents. And we'll go ahead and scrape off all of this. Also, we're gonna be doing the R134A conversion for the AC. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a new valve, all the seals and as well as uh, both, I'm gonna get the new radiator and the condenser, or I don't know if it's not the condenser, but I'm gonna get the new radiator uh, for both of these so that they're brand new. And then obviously new lines. LC, Wiley, and Co. just came out with a full E30 325i or 325 uh, S14. I'm not sure about the M10 or M42, but he came out with a full R134A conversion, condenser, pump, bracket, all that. Not sponsored or anything, but check the link in the description and order his kit if you want something complete. So let's go ahead and start tearing down this one. And just in case I need some extra parts, I got that one and I happen to have two more up there. But I'm gonna be using the late model one in my IS. The only reason is for most of the time, these are broken and they break in here. So when you're removing the unit from your car, you have to make sure that these flaps are all the, ways, all the way closed. And if they're not, you'll end up breaking the tab on the inside, which is held in by this lever. So what you should do is before you take it out, go ahead and pop these pins out of here, of the motors, so that you can, cause they'll get, they'll get stuck. They'll get stuck like this. That's as far as they'll usually go by hand. So to get, and it'll get caught on the chassis. So you wanna make sure they're closed all the way so you don't rip the plastic 
there's a little plastic thing right there. Let's see, Let's zoom in, turn the light on. Very easy to break right there. So make sure you take your time pulling that out. So go ahead and just pop these out real quick and then that will help you close them. And then you don't have a broken one like this. This one is, see that side's not broken. This side's broken. So as you can see, it broke right in there. And now this needs to be fixed with a new piece. So just take your time when pulling it out of the car, which if you wanna see it get removed from the car, click the link right there to my disassembly video of the 87 IS. So go ahead and start chaining this thing down. Well, I'm glad that I have multiple casings. As you can see, a previous fan exploded in here and ripped that in pieces as well as this into two pieces instead of the one. So I'll definitely be taking apart multiple HVAC units to get one perfect one out of the four here. Alrighty, well, that was a mess, but I wanted to share something. In Restored's video, he knocked another pin out the middle of this. You have this long one, which controls this right here, and goes to this, which you do have to knock out. That there isn't another rod here. There is no rod going through the center of this one. It's just held in uh, when the two halves are together. And then also, the early model ones all use uh, Phillips screws, and you're gonna need a massive long screwdriver because there is one screw that's all the way down in there. Now, the late model uses the, the E-Torx, or like security bits right there, the five points. And so you're gonna need the same screwdriver, but be able to switch out for the security bits because you have to get the one way in there, right there, which splits it apart. I was too lazy to go buy another tool, so just added some duct tape and security bit and was able to get that last one out. So a little tip, add some tape, turn it so it doesn't move anymore, and then add more duct tape and it should work. So these are actually pre-86 boxes. So you can see here, it actually does have the rod that goes through the center. Unlike the other ones, you can also see this is very early E30 technology with those compared to 89 and compared to 86 plus. This is all for one box and the top section is good. So that's the top original top section from the late model box, but you can see the, the fan exploded. That box isn't good enough. Excuse the background noise, but this is going to be the box from my 87, which is exactly the same. I just transferred everything that was on that box to this box, got it cleaned up, got to order the seals. We're going to be using the late model valve, most likely going to be using the early model wiring. I was thinking about why there are uh, 10 here and there's only nine there, but for the wires that go to the ECU, there's two, so that's an extra one where there's only one on the early model harness. So I'm gonna go through and probably cut them both open and make sure all the wires are the same. And if they are, I'll just use the early model harness just so it plugs in, no problem. Um, but we shouldn't have any problem with the, the valve there because the temp sensor is the same on both. Unlike the early models, which are just like a line, like this, this is the temp sensor. If the pigtails aren't the same, I probably will just cut and splice the early model to late model just so the pigtails are the same. I wanna to try to figure out how I could seal these this off so that no air can come out. It's nice once in a while to have air go to your feet, but I don't want the air going underneath the seat for whatever reason they have that. So this whole section at the bottom, I'm gonna go ahead and delete. I'm hoping I'm actually gonna delete a lot of this and move this into something else instead of having an HVAC panel, which I think would be cool. Since this is just a knob that can still controls the lever right here. So if I move everything and it's still the correct length 
it should be fine even if it's bent a little bit as long as it's smooth i should be able to move everything into different places excuse the background noise and excuse the absolute mess that's on this table i went ahead and ordered some close cell neoprene foam i'll put the link in the description i tried a few different brands and then i found this one which was good because you could scratch it and it wouldn't just like peel up. There's the roll. I'm probably gonna need more of that. According to uh, Jordan Serrett, um, he's all over the Facebook groups. He rebuilt his heater core box and recommended 1 16th thick foam. Also to let it overhang just slightly. Obviously this is a test one, so I'm gonna have to correct that. And then if you have flock, like the, the flock fibers that you use to flock a dash or you can just let it dust over time, but it might stick a little when you close them. So he said just to flock the edges uh, so that the the stickiness doesn't stick to uh, the housing. So I went ahead and cut some of these out. They're not perfect. You know, they're the best I can do without being a, a pre-made thing, which would be awesome because that is an absolute pain to cut correctly and get get that perfect line all the way around. It's all finished, got them flocked. So now the edges are nice and soft rather than all sticky. So I'll go ahead, I'm gonna install it back in the casing and we'll see how it is. Everything sits in there nicely. I probably could have left a little bit more room on some of the edges, but I think overall compared to that other foam, this will do at least seal a little bit better and at least I went through and cleaned the whole unit so there's not gonna be any weird smells coming through it. I wanna go ahead and move on to the lower piece here. Go ahead and wire wheel the whole thing and uh, prep it for the felt. That's it for that top section right here, which was an absolute pain. Those small little cuts are, are terrible. That should be a little bit easier. And then most of the other cuts that go on top of the two condensers or radiators, whatever you call them, are just nice long cuts. So those should be pretty simple. Go ahead and get this one prepped. Alrighty, well that was the easiest one to cut, uh, as well as the top. So just as a reminder, so what I did was um, I went 10, 10 by 5, find the center, then go up 4, which will get you right there. And then these are one and then a half in, and that will get you these. And then I just, after I laid it out, I just took the smallest sliver off each of the sides and it fit perfectly. And then for the top, I took a little bit, a tiny sliver off the top. And again, it's a tiny sliver on both sides, just so it sits in there nice and it's far enough away from the back where it folds over, no problem. Got the whole harness nicely rewrapped. Now I'm gonna go ahead and modify this so that we no longer need the third lever. Went ahead and got the rivets in. I already had put the bottom piece on and all the other retainers, so just recommend don't put the bottom piece on until you're done with this. Go ahead and close this up, and then we'll go ahead and throw all the rest of the, where'd I put it? radiator back in I gotta close up some holes on the outside so I put some plastic JB weld in those holes with a little bit of blue tape on the inside I'll probably it says wait 15 minutes till it cures I'll take remove the tape if it needs another skim I'll do another skim on top but it just needs to seal it that's about it now we have to seal these which are the vents for your knees slash it getting directed to uh, underneath the driver and passenger seat. So I actually did two coats on that one. You will also need to cover that hole, that inside hole, that hole, and then obviously the inside hole on the other one. If you're deleting this part like I am, if you're not, don't just, you're simply gonna riv nut those back in to have your bottom cable run to the flap right here, just like this. What I think I'm gonna do is possibly add the foam, or oh, I'm definitely gonna clean it, and then I think I'm just gonna go ahead and put it back in, and then just glue all around the edges, 
either I'll silicone it in so that, let's say at a later time for service, which you don't really need to service it, that you could remove this. Still, there's no reason to, but I probably will just glue, glue it all the way around and then blast some air through and make sure it's fully sealed. Well, this is a mess up on my part. Make sure you get this wire routed on the inside or the outside of this plug and not just coming down behind it. I don't know what I was thinking, but it the hole where it comes out is right where this is right here. So I'm gonna have to finagle around and try to get that moved so that there's enough room for this to slide all the way in. So everything went in smoothly and that's all connected. This spins with no resistance, doesn't hit anything. It is a little loose, which is a little concerning, but it's been a good minute since the last clip. I had to wait on a bunch of parts to get in. So let's go over all the new parts and part numbers. Go ahead and start with some seals, which will go right in here. Firewall grommet, which will go there as well. These are uh, vents for the sides. Another vent. And then this is a vibration dampener for the front. This is like $26. So, I mean, if you can find one used or the one that's on your car is not terrible, use it. Don't buy a new one. It's kind of ridiculous. We have the main gasket right there. There's all the part numbers, the straps that go across right there. Those are expensive as well. I forget if they're like $10 a piece or something. And then we have the other main gasket that goes right there with the part number. Lastly, we have a evaporator. OEM one, super expensive. Uh, I'll put the part number right here since I don't have it. And then we also have a new radiator. Uh, let's see if there's a part number on here. There you go. This piece right here, I'm gonna reuse. It is super expensive. Uh, it's like two, 300 bucks for this piece. And then these are in good condition. So I'm gonna reuse these as well. Let's start with the evaporator and the new radiator. There's a few uh, pieces that we're gonna need to cut to cover the top and the sides before this is ready to go in. We're gonna put foam around the evaporator. This is the thickest foam I have. Um, people use foam that's probably double the thickness but I don't really want to wait to order more so what we're gonna do is top side bottom and maybe a little bit on the inside here so I'm gonna go ahead and measure everything out and we'll get to cutting all right there we go bottom all the way around there is supposed to be some insulation that goes here um, I'm gonna see if I can find the part number or exactly what it is and then eventually I'll, I'll get that filled in but for now, I did 13 by four, and then this was four by six on the side. So this will do for now. Let's go ahead and throw this into the box. Go ahead and slide this in. You don't wanna to push too hard because these are fragile. All right, I totally forgot about the sensor here. This is why it didn't want to go in all the way. That was what was making it difficult. Now it should go in just fine. If you could see, there is a spot for it to go in right there. And that's where it was hitting. So, well, there is this another spot. There's two spots, but I guess we'll, let me try to poke it in first. Oh, the sensor's too long for the, for the radiator. That's annoying. Might have to drill that out a little bit, so this should be fun. I love drilling in the things that are brand new, but See if we can make it a little bit longer. Don't know what I just drilled into. Hopefully it's fine. <laughs> Went ahead and got a longer bit. The longest 1 8 drill bit I could find was this carbide, probably meant for concrete bit. But that worked just enough to get it far enough so that this can be pressed in. It might hang out uh, a little bit from here uh, but at least it'll be nice and snug once it's in. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back in and we can finish up with the condenser and move on to the new radiator. I decided since I had just a bunch of extra that, and I couldn't find the part number for what they used before. I so I just stuffed it with more and just got it all the way around. So it's nice and insulated. Should be good. 
So I'm going to go ahead, bolt the cover on, and we will do the R134A conversion in a later video. So I'm not going to take these off just yet or uh, attach the expansion valve. So stay tuned for that video in the future. Now let's go ahead and get the new radiator put on, on the other side and then we can be pretty much done with the box besides the latches and the big uh, gaskets. All right, so got the new radiator in the box here. Let's go over the old one real quick. We're gonna go ahead and replace the O-rings in here and in here and in here. Obviously we're replacing the grommet and we're gonna go ahead and replace this whole thing. But we don't need to cover it in foam like we did before. As you can see, there's a little bit here, a little bit on the side here, and it follows along here and just on the bottom, which is, I guess, all the foam you need. And it does come with some in the box. There's our foam, and there is the radiator. Right there, care about to bend any of the fins. Get a nice thick booklet that we're not gonna use. Put it in the garbage. All right, well, I cut off, I wrapped it around, cut off about five inches, which doesn't actually seem to be like they gave you enough, so just do your best, I guess, or I'm gonna double up on some extra of the other foam, but the main portion of it going around, I have. So go ahead and, if you have it in this position, you'll start at the top here, you'll go across, you'll go diagonal, and then you'll hit the bottom on the way back. And then we'll go ahead and just do this piece right here. Let's go ahead and take this apart. So we're gonna take the grommet off first. And then all we have is a bunch of eights. Now, most of it's held on by these in the back. So we're most likely gonna to have to transfer those over to the, the new radiator. All right, there we go. And this we can get rid of. Looks like this bottom one's been replaced before. Let's go ahead and take the old O-ring off, which still feels nice, but we're gonna replace it no matter what. So those are our old three O-rings. Now for our new ones, there is the part number right there. Probably should lubricate them a little bit. I'm just gonna use the littlest bit of engine oil just so they're at least a little uh, wet and not dry. Is it right? Probably not. Am I gonna do it anyway? Yes. But I just want them lubricated enough to where when they go in, they at least have some lubrication, so. All right. Go ahead and slide this back in. So there is a notch on how it's supposed to go which is fantastic, BMW, great idea. Let's go ahead and throw, let's throw them back on lightly. Don't forget if these, if that falls out, go ahead and pop it back in. So I'm gonna pop this one back in. Go ahead and attach it to this carefully. Go ahead and pull out the, the tabs. See the grooves. The top one does not have a groove, the lower one does. All that matters is the lower one here. Grooves at the bottom, so make sure the flange is towards the bottom. All right, let's get it all back in. Everything's tight. Go ahead and connect this right here. All right, before we do the upper seal, go ahead and put the new grommet on for the front of this. So I messed up a little bit. You wanna make sure, and I'll put this in the beginning of the video, take these off before you reinstall everything because you have to push the pins back in so that you can pop them out. So I'm gonna have to somehow find those. Okay, I'm actually gonna install these first. Here are the straps. Okay, so you're gonna go long side connected to here. It's just a simple push in. Go ahead and put this back on, make sure it's centered. And then we'll go ahead and 
pop this one in. And we'll pop this one in. I'm not going to latch them right now. Uh, I'm going to go through and test the box first to make sure everything's good before I cinch them down. But now, let's go and put this one on. Oh, I got to zoom you guys out. You guys are too close. Start from the inside and work my way out. Seems like this is a little long. I'm going to go ahead and just trim this straight. Nice and flat. Perfect. Definitely wouldn't say it's the best fitting gasket, but let's get the other one on. Major one. Back isn't perfect, but at least the rest of this is pretty good. Alrighty, that's pretty much it for this video. I'm gonna end it here, and because that's pretty much everything. The only things to do are you're just gonna put your screws in here, slide them into place, and plug those in, and you're all done. The only things left to do are really to install them back in the car. I'm going to give you guys the part numbers for the other three vent grommets. So you have that one, you have one of these, and you have two of that part number. And then you have this vibration dampener, which goes in the front here. One thing that someone mentioned is that these boards in here, are 97 and below, have these boards, which mean... Your AC won't actually work until both of these are like slightly over and the boards fry. And those boards go to this wiring harness. So what I was been told is you can just loop the, the wires together uh, so you will never have issues and you don't need that board. In the next video, before I install the box, I'm gonna go ahead and test everything uh, with all the pins right here. So we'll go ahead and test everything. I also think I'm going to be switching out the sliders for the mechanism on this Z3M box as it seems the Z3M box is actually the same as this box. Obviously there's some slight differences but the controls I like way better than the slides where I can just use one knob to control both of these because what you want is if you want it going to your face. You don't want it going to the top. Of, you don't want it going up. So the Z3M knob, what it does is when you go this way, it closes this one. And when you go this way, it closes that one. So it makes everything into one knob since I've already got rid of the third, since I won't be using any of the feet. Stay tuned for the next video. But other than that, that's it. That's how to restore your HVAC box. If you guys have any questions, put them down in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you don't follow me on Instagram, it's right here. If you guys need any E30, E36M3, Z3M, E46M3 parts, check out my parts page right here. And that's about it. Thank you very much. Have a great day.